Hello guys and welcome back to the channel. Today's video is all about the National League relegation picture. Willstone are right in it unfortunately. Um, we've had to uh, sack our manager or depart with our manager David Noble after a dreadful performance uh, against Boreham Wood. Um, obviously as players we feel very responsible. A lot of things not going right, um, especially in that performance where we actually had lots of chances to score in that game but the character and the energy we showed was very, very poor uh, against a, a fellow relegation outfit in Boreham Wood. And yeah, losing in such a manner has put us right in, the, right in it, to be fair. So we have four games in seven days, including that one. So on Tuesday, we had uh, Southend, where unfortunately we, we lost 2-1. Um, I missed an absolute sitter in that game. Um, I was up at night on Tuesday thinking about it. Um, after the game, Wednesday, couldn't, <laughs> couldn't stop thinking about it. Um, I had to kind of spend some time with some family and just to kind of reset and go again. We lost 2-1 in the game, which we actually really competed really well in. Um, but fair play to Southend. What they've gone through this season, wow. Um, I think they're just behind the playoffs. I'm not sure they'll make it, but you never know. And having 10 points deducted um, is pretty incredible. So we have Dorking Wanderers next on Thursday and then the Champions Chesterfield on Saturday. We have to win two or three games before the end of the season. We've only four left to play. Um, so come along and see how it goes. Good evening, everybody, and welcome to Grows the Vale on an unusual Thursday night kickoff here in the National League first uh, for Wildstone versus Dorking Wanderers. So the first half was obviously um, a tight, contested half. Um, I think both teams were kind of feeling each other out. Dorking kind of went man for man with us when we got into uh, the final third. So it was quite uh, difficult to break down. You see some just half chances here for for either side. But yeah, at half time it was nil nil, and I was thinking, you know, this isn't actually uh, too bad a position we're in because in these big games, the last thing you want to do is go 2-3-0 down early doors. So I think maybe Dorking were thinking the same as well. But second half, <laughs> they come out very, very fast. Um, brought on some players and a cross ended up with Bark scoring an own goal, unfortunately, here. Um, and Dorking were on the up. It's 1-0 to Dorking. Two minutes gone in the second half. The early threat from Tom Blair and... Dorking were flying forward now with loads of confidence um, and they just hit us two goals in really quick succession after half time. As you can see a second phase comes out here and again Blair who made a really good impact gets another assist for my old teammate Charlie Carter who headed it and I thought I'd saved it onto the crossbar but Linesman gave a, goal, uh, gave a goal straight away. And I was asked after this game did you think you were down and relegated now or obviously did you think you'd lost this game and I've had moments like that in the past where maybe we're in a cup or we're winning a game and you look up to the sky and somehow you look up going how the hell are we losing this game but I didn't really feel this in this game as you just see the slow-mo here I don't know I thought I'd saved it off the line but maybe not um, but I didn't feel that I just thought we were gonna we we're gonna score and create chances and um, luckily when you've got players like Aaron Henry in your team you've always got a chance Henry chops in onto his left foot clips it to the back post it's 2-1 to Dorkin, Harrison Mayo won't give the ball back. No, it's game on now, come on Wilson! It must be said now, this game was absolutely mental from here on out. Um, Dorkin nearly went 3-1 up here with a great That's volley, oh, um, great. very close. And there were just chances coming thick and fast, Cookie going wide here from a set piece. But we began to press and we began to get the ball back all the time. And we were confident eventually we, we, we could uh, create a goal scoring opportunity. Smash 
Ray into the top of the net and he punches the air with joy. It's Willstone 2, Dorking 2. Without a doubt, my favourite goal since coming to Willstone for the occasion, um, the actual skill of the goal as well. I just wanted to show my movement before I've come short and I'll just pause it here. I've checked over my shoulder and obviously seen the space and I've got that relationship with Sean where I know he's going to come feet and hold it up and he finds me with a great pass and I managed to exploit that space I was just checking. So for young players there, just to check for space all the time and I managed to get good contact with it and yeah, it's a great goal in the end. I think all us players now felt that the game was there for the taking. Um, Dorking, obviously, I didn't realise until after the game, just as I show you a chance I had here again on the left foot, got stuck in the sand. They were very in uh, a lot of injuries in their team. Um, you could feel that they were getting a bit tired and our crowd was going absolutely crazy and you're just feeding off that adrenaline from them. And Yeah, Dorking do like to play out from the back, so they're kind of patterns are kind of evaporated by this stage and we're able to win an easy ball here and get a penalty off it. On the slow-mo here, you just see I can just nick the ball first and yeah, it's a penalty. I've had a bit of stick off my mate saying I dive, but no chance. A relatively long wait for the penalty to be taken. I've had much longer in the past, so it weren't too bad, but obviously I've missed my last penalty in the FA Trophy, so just going through my processes again. Nice deep breath and get good contact on the ball. blows his whistle. Another deep breath from Chris Rarand. He flies the goal! <laughs> and this is a massive turnaround! With the emotion in this game just completely off the scale now, one goal lead really isn't a lot. So this fourth goal coming up was absolutely massive and gave us a cushion confidence to go on and win the game. Taran Alarak is in. He's in. He scores! He scores! He scores! Taran Alarak! He's in! That's my boy, man! I mean, we didn't have too many nervy moments in the closing stages of the game. Um, Dorking weren't really able to like sustain attacks. Um, just watch Cookie turn into uh, Wilson Maradona just for a little bit. Fantastic dribble. And then I feel for Sean here because it's right in the middle of the sandpit in the middle. And like I said, they couldn't really sustain any pressure Dorking. And we had chance after chance. And it really could have been, um, you know, five or six. But at the end of the day... Um, to get four goals, having been 2-0 down, was some t achievement and showed amazing character from the boys. And you can see from me in a minute uh, here when the final whistle finally went, the relief was just incredible. Massive win for the Stones, and it's nothing more than they deserve. They were 2-0 down. They were gone. They looked gone. And they mustered up the energy, the courage. They fought for the badge on the front of that shirt for all those fans in the Hollywell stand and the other stands. And they've come out of this game, and they have won 4-2. This result all but ensured uh, Dorking were going to get relegated from the National League this season. Um, I think if they win all their games left, they'd still be 15, 16 goals behind on goal difference. So as we celebrated our ecstasy, there was obviously agony on the other side. And I know obviously Charlie Carter from Dorking and uh, from my days at Woking. So, yeah, difficult to have those conversations. But, um, yeah, I've got a lot of respect for Dorking Wanderers and what Mark Wright has done there over the years. I think everyone in football um, with any sort of knowledge knows the story behind uh, Dorking Wanderers and yeah I'm sure they'll be back but for us yeah huge result it meant that we get three massive points towards survival 
this is our third game in six days. We had a game on Saturday, Tuesday and Thursday and uh, we've got top of the league uh, Chesterfield next, um, which would make four games in seven days. And yeah, it's on to the next one. So according to my calculations, about 42 hours later, we were playing against the champions of the league, the best team in the land, of course. Um, so we gave them a guard of honour. Um, Chesterfield obviously been outstanding this season, uh, ran away with the league. But we knew their form, um, having won the league, hasn't been too great. Obviously, mentally, you're obviously going to just drop off a little bit. Um, and, you know, we're, being a part-time team and having played on Thursday, we literally had a 10-minute tactical meeting with um, the gaffer and the coaching staff to try and come up with a plan to defeat them. Uh, we knew they were going to have a lot of the ball, so it, it, the meeting kind of surrounded um, defensive shape and we're always going to be dangerous on the counter-attack, as you see here. And we actually had two really good chances first half. Michael with a great run here, um, a 2v1 with Taron and just couldn't quite um, get the finish there with, you know, the pass was a little bit behind him, but also... Um, just grass is very, very dry today. But, of course, they've got lots of weapons, uh, Chesterfield. Um, so many goals and creators in their team. Um, we knew how to be defensively sound. And, um, yeah, I thought I thought we were. And, like I said, as you can see from a couple of these clips, we, we, we threatened on the break. Ash Palmer standing up against Malaraki with a shot. It's not good. Well, not great goalkeeping, is it? But back down below us, it's again Jeff King. As Chesterfield attack up the right, good ball inside Mandeville. With Sam working to hold their, their shape around the edge of the box. Comes inside there, Grimes is going to have a go off his left foot. A great effort as well, good save by the goalkeeper who falls on it. He's, 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 really, yeah, he's kicked out. When you are playing against a team who are going to dominate the ball, uh, set pieces and just trying to force errors become a really important thing uh, in your armoury. And Jesse Cookie just couldn't quite get it there. Um, I actually came off uh, now and Jack Young came on and this is why his energy and his press forcing an error and the other sub Dylan De Silva who joined from Torquay quite recently who's made a really good impact from the wing and up front celebrates like crazy. Far too short and a drift of his goalkeeper and the former QPR winger Will Stones number 19 Dylan De Silva Nets in the empty goal and the Buller crowd, the Hollywell crowd, go absolutely crazy. Well, you don't see many mistakes this season by Chesterfield and that was certainly catastrophic. Danger stations for Wilson, the ball played in towards the goalkeeper, Marcus Dewhurst, headed back across, header away towards the far post and the ball was turned into the far post and Chesterfield thought they had an equaliser but the flag has gone up. 
it's Ash Palmer who put the ball in the net in the end when it's nodded back, but presumably. In he comes. Ball floats in. Good delivery, a flick off somebody's head. Tyra's on the ball in the edge of his own box. He's lost it to Sam Bowen. Oh, and Wilson had a chance on the break there with the no goalkeeper. Yeah. John has blown the final whistle. And Wilson have upset the odds with a 1 0 win over Chesterfield here this afternoon, courtesy of Dylan De Silva's quick thinking and capitalising on a, well, a catastrophic mistake by the Chesterfield captain, Jamie Grimes, who's been amazing this season. It matters not to Chesterfield, they were the champions. When I say that Dorking game was the most mental game I've played in, possibly since. Um, I was at Woking in the playoff semi-final against Willstone, ironically, when we won 3-2, having been 2-0 down. We went one better this time, and won 4-2. That game, that stadium, I think there was over 2,000 there, all right behind us, was mad. The adrenaline you got as a player, uh, as I said on comms, like, I didn't think we'd lost when we were 2-0 down, but it's a long, long way to go. Um, such a huge victory. And then to back it up uh, against the champions, as you can see, we gave... Um, we gave them the guard of honour. Uh, they've been absolutely unbelievable this season, Chesterfield. You probably should have gone up last year, uh, having lost in the playoffs on penalties. But yeah, to get six points out of those two games was huge, to say the least. Absolutely massive. Uh, the players have been unbelievable. The staff coming in, obviously coxie has been brilliant, um, the gaffer. But um, I think we've used the squad really well. Every player has known they've had to play a role um, because we've had like seven games in 14 days, something crazy. And we still got a couple uh, more to go. So it's on to Eastleigh on Tuesday. Uh, I think, according to my calculations, a win will be enough. Bournemouth and Ebbsfleet, who are both down there fighting for their lives, play each other on the last game of the season. So someone will be dropping points there. But boys and girls, we just have to look after business ourselves. And yeah, if we can win uh, against Eastleigh, we are up. And to be fair, that would be a great achievement for this club considering the problems and the things we've had to go through this season, obviously with the managers leaving and things like that. So guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. Please like and subscribe. This was one of the hardest ones to put together. What a game uh, against Dorkin. That will live long in the memory. And I just pray and hope that we can finish the job off and that that memory will be last a lifetime because it will mean something that we stay up in the National League. But guys, like I said, Please like, comment and subscribe uh, and I'll see you all very, very soon.